can have your attention, please? Uh, I, I kind of hate to start things off like this, but uh, something very terrible has happened. Uh, kind of disappointed in, in a lot of, well, in, in one person in particular. Um, it seems that a certain individual, I won't mention his name or anything, uh, kind of got out of hand a few minutes ago. Uh, he was sitting back there by Wanda Webb. And um, it's kind of ugly. I really don't feel like getting into it, but I feel like I have to say something. And he was back there just sitting by Wanda Webb, who was minding her own business, obviously. And um, this individual, um, I really don't know how to say this, but he kind of got out of hand, you know, kind of got a little fresh with her. And uh, she had to uh, stick her fork into his hand, you know, to stop him. And, uh, and, and the sad part about it is, is this happened right in front of her uh, husband. Joke. I, I didn't touch your wife. <laughs> anyway, uh, before we also, also before we start, we have a lot of people to thank, and uh, and, one, and one person in particular I'd like to thank is uh, Hal Mobley. Uh, as many of you may or may not know, Hal Mobley was our poster child this year. <laughs> so, I'd like to special thanks for, for Hal. And we'll be starting in just a moment. in my front yard. Uh, I would have had more potatoes tonight, but so much of it's still left in my front yard. My, my dog's very happy about that, basically. And, um, okay, um, donations. Uh, Ron and Nell Bush took care of donations. James Sumrall. Now, while we're thanking James Sumrall for having reservations, I don't know. I know I had reservations about coming up here, and no one's thanked me, so I don't know why we're thanking James. Uh, also, taking care of cleanup is Betsy Sneathan. Now, obviously that hasn't happened yet, so what I think we all need to do is, after the dinner theater is over, we, we need to all kind of hang around out in the foyer and, and, and wait until the whole thing's been cleaned up, and, and then we can thank her properly. If she deserves it. If not, we'll just walk off. <laughs> um, taking care of publicity has been Beth Buchanan. Um, hmm? Buck, Buck Cannon. Thank you, Steve. And um, desserts, Bruce Worley. Now, I don't want to confuse you. Bruce Worley didn't bring any desserts. Uh, everyone brought desserts but Bruce Worley. And so, that's what he's listed on there. So, special thanks. Uh, I ate one of his desserts last, last year, and I, and I got over it. Uh, Day before yesterday, I think it was. So I feel much better now. And um, 
A special Shamrock Award goes to Joanne Motley for getting all this together. Now, I don't know if that deserves thanks or not, but she did a great job. So a round of applause for all these people. <laughs> I'm the only one in the youth dinner theater tonight. <laughs> I figure I'm old enough to qualify for three or four youth. Uh, one other thing I forgot to do uh, before we start, and this is, this is imperative that we get this done. Thank you. I'm in the dark anyway, so we don't have to have that. Um, I don't know if any of you ever watched David Letterman, um, but he always has a top ten list. And I know several magazines have a top ten list, and I thought it would be only appropriate for us to start out tonight with a top ten list. These are top ten things that you will never hear said at North Irving Baptist Church. This is a real top ten list. If it weren't, I wouldn't be able to do this. Okay, top ten things you will not hear, never, ever, ever hear at North Irving Baptist Church. Number ten. You know, I don't think David Williamson looks all that bad. <laughs> never, never hear. Uh, another thing you'll never hear, number nine, I don't believe I've met Hal Mobley. throughout the entire sermon. Uh, another thing, number seven, why don't we have more church work days? Uh, um, here's, here's my personal favorite, number six, can we keep the 10% and tie the 90% instead? I think so. Okay. Another thing you'll never hear at North Oregon Baptist Church is that was a fine sermon, Pastor. <laughs> Number four, let's just give the youth the money so that they don't have to do these dinner theaters each year. Baptist Church. Number three, can we have visitation twice a week, every week? Something we'll never hear. Possibly. I don't know, I could be wrong on that one. I know Hal wants to have visitation every night. Um, number two, and I think this is one that hits home with each and every one of us. I want my kids to be just like Daryl and Steve. <laughs> got to kind of use your imagination because when I attempt to, to do a uh, impersonation and uh, number one thing you'll never hear at North Irving Baptist Church is no I don't think Eddie looks like Jack Nicholson <laughs> okay, without further ado we have the my personal favorite skit because this, this is how I, I cook the hamburger skit Sir, here's your hamburger. Wait! There's a hair on my hamburger. This is disgusting. I'm 
sorry, sir. I'll go get you another one. Hurry up. <laughs> Waiter! Here you go, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Waiter! <laughs> this one has a heroin, too. I'm sorry, sir. I'm tired of this. I'm sure it won't happen again. I'll be, I'll be right back. Stephanie saw that skit before they made the food tonight. <laughs> I'm going to tell you that. Okay. Second skit for tonight is The Frontier Psychiatrist, Act One.
a frontier psychologist, psychiatrist. No, that's not all of it, sir. We'll be escorted out of here. Could you keep your husband under control, thank you. Let the pastor get a word in edgewise that he takes over. That was act one. Okay. There will be another act, Eddie. Right. We'll tell you when it starts, too. So. <laughs> I hate this job. Okay. That was a very good job, I thought. Because I saw the practice. <laughs> we now have the boxer skit starring two of our favorite youth. Gentlemen, tonight on ABC's Wild Water Sports, we're taking you to Madison Square Garden where we're going to have an on the spot report with Lower East Side's pride and joy, Rocky the Kid Canvas Bag. <laughs> now, tell us, Rocky, how does it feel to be on national TV? Hi, Mom. Hi, Dad. <laughs> What's so funny, Rocky? I'm an orphan. <laughs> no responsibility for this one, as if he claimed responsibility for the first ones, I guess. I don't know. <coughs> Next we have uh, Tim Webb and Scott Mobley, and I'm, I'm sure their parents are probably beaming with pride right about now, knowing that they are going to be in the Crop Duster skit. <laughs> Today it is our privilege to have with us one of the men who has made America great. Risking life and limb daily, he pursues his dangerous task with the calm, cool nerves of a man who is truly one of the great adventures of modern times. 
His is the skill that has contributed so much to the wealth and beauty of our country and our, and our abundant harvest. A real warm hand for one of California's foremost crop dusters, Dusty crash -a -Lot. Dusty, it's really great to have, have you here with us today. Just how long have you been a crop duster? Two weeks. <laughs> Two weeks? That's not a very long time. Well, the life expectancy for a crop duster isn't very long either. We can only get one kind of insurance. I thought your job was so dangerous that you couldn't get any kind of insurance. Yeah, I'm fully covered for childbirth. <laughs> I see, but uh, Dusty, uh, were you ever a commercial pilot before you, before you were a crop duster? Oh, yeah, I was piloted on a cattle ranch once. A cattle ranch? What does a pilot on a cattle ranch do? I just pilot here and pilot there. <laughs> Dusty, what kind of equipment do you use in your work? Uh, a feather duster or whisk broom. <laughs> go up and down the rows, dusting off the plants. I get to break, you know. You mean you actually dust off the plants with a feather duster? Well, I used my wife's wig once, but man, did she blow her top. <laughs> Dusty, what kind of, uh, do, do you ever fly an airplane? Oh, yeah. Flew one from the back of the room all the way to the chalkboard once. <laughs> no, I mean, don't you fly an airplane when you crop dust? Heck no, that'd be too dangerous. You have to have your hands free to dip into the sack. <laughs> no, I mean, don't, I mean, uh... You fly the plane with your feet, but you sure as heck couldn't dip your feet in the sack. <laughs> well, what is, what is the crop that you dust the most, Dusty? That would have to be a potange. A potange? What is that? Yeah, it's a cross between a potato and a sponge. <laughs> Sounds interesting. Does it taste good? Heck no, but man, does it soak up the gravy. <laughs> Dusty, do you ever work in cotton? No, all my undergarments are Japanese silk. <laughs> Dusty, tell us about your most exciting experience as a crop duster. Well, that would have to be the time I flew my plane so high, the field below looked like a postage stamp. I sent my plane into a power dive, crashed right into the earth. Did you hit the field? What field? It was a postage stamp. <laughs> Dusty, do you have any more experiences like that? Yeah. One time I was flying along 10,000 feet, lost all power. Ooh, that's bad. Not too bad. I had a parachute. Oh, well, that's good. <laughs> Not too good. Parachute wouldn't open. Ooh, that's bad. Not too bad. There was a haystack below. Oh, well, that's good. Not too good. There was a pitchfork in the haystack. Ooh, that's bad. Not too bad. I missed a pitchfork. Oh, well, that's good. No, that's bad. I missed a haystack. special treat. We have David Sneathan playing the French horn. He will be accompanied by his sister Kathy on the piano. <coughs>
And, and what presentation would be complete with, without a commercial, a commercial interruption? We pause now for a commercial interruption. It's the end of another long, hard day punching cattle. And the sweat is dripping off your manhood because you're a man. And you sweat like a man, like only a man can. Because you do a man's job that really works up a man's appetite. And only a man knows what a man wants to know when a man really wants a man's taste. And that taste is the taste of Wriggler's beef-flavored gum. <laughs> Flavored gum, the kind of gum that belongs between a man's teeth. And Wrigley brings you new barbecue beef flavored gum. Wrigley's, the meat lover's gum. <laughs> Kathy Sneathen. Sneathen. Easy for you to say. Who is going to sing, sing to the Lord.
should harbor some resentment? Well, uh, I guess so. Now, did anything unusual happen to you as a child? Well, let me think. Oh, yeah, yeah. When I was eight years old, my home ran away from me. You mean you ran away from home? No, my home ran away from me. We lived in a covered wagon. I fell out. <laughs> sermon that had three points. And Ellen, can you pick that? That had three points. And a one and a half points each. each half. Of course, like most sermons, we can't tell you what the points are. We don't have that. to the pastor, you, you feel so sinful. <laughs> I haven't sinned in 15, 20 minutes at least. I feel so dirty and everything. Uh, okay. <coughs> Next we have David Dunlap, who is going to play his obi. Oh, oh. oh, oh. <laughs> I thought it was one of those little rubber things you squeeze it and his eyes pop out. And I wanted to see what he was going to do with it, but uh, he'll be disappointed now.
much more organized in practice. It's the people throw us off, and then the lights going out that throws us off too. We didn't practice that. Well. <laughs> What to say. <laughs> First time I've never known what to say. Next we have, huh? Tell a joke. No one. <laughs> Hal said we're looking at one. <laughs> I have the microphone. Don't get in an argument with me. I can be heard. Next we have a hospital skit. with these people to the hospital after the skit. That's why we call it the hospital skit. Next we have David Sneathan who's going to juggle for us and uh, I don't know if any of you all know this or not but uh, I myself used to juggle but uh, they all sort of found out about each other and then it was over. <laughs> it, it, it sort of became more like a knife throwing act after that. But without further ado here's David Sneathan who will be
be introduced by his little sister. next skit that they're going to do, and, and I thought, you know, they will get dates. It'll probably be with guys named Bruce and Steve, <laughs> but not with girls. That's, that's what I meant. That's the point I was trying to make. Are, are you ladies ready? 
along the lights, turn off the lights. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the Supremes. <laughs> soft song from West Side Story. It's one of our favorites. And I know you're just going to love it.
just look as manly as possible. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. That's. Somebody pick Mr. Miserable and leave up off the floor. Okay, you ladies and gentlemen, can I have all the youth out here now? This is all the youth. He's going to Falls Creek with all the money. He's flying. Don't play. All the youth, please. We'd like to thank you, each and every one of you for uh, coming out here tonight. So I'd like to take a, a few minutes just to just to thank each and every one of you. Thank you, 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 after they come back from Falls Creek, we'll have all these problems solved. <laughs> but we'd like to thank you all for, for coming out and making this such a big success. We had a lot of fun doing it, and we hope you had a lot of fun here tonight. <laughs> Randy, do you want to make your announcement? Yeah. Okay. Just, just the perfect way to top this all off, Randy Taylor. Yeah. <laughs> Jay, all I want to know is what you doing teaching them guys in Sunday school? <laughs> also, if you look at your programs, there's uh, several places that donated food and uh, cups and plates and condiments and things of that nature. Uh, we'd like to thank each and every one of those places for, for making this possible also. Okay, I got the floor. Wouldn't we want you people to get away tonight without a little memento of the madness? And what better memento can anybody give you on St. Patrick's Day than a bag of potatoes? <laughs> we have bags of potatoes at our ears. And unless you buy them for a bag for a dollar, the youth are going to be eating them all day at Falls Creek. <laughs> Just add a little incentive to the deal. We've got two coupons for free hot apple pies from Whataburger. Okay? All of this for one dollar. We've got 14 bags, first 14 people to come up and take advantage of this great deal. Shall yeah, walk off with their bag of potatoes. I'll leave a little bowl here. That's all I have. <laughs>